Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe in which we're playing as everyone's favorite authoritarian socialist, Genrik Yagoda. If you'd like to read about him, please go ahead. But we're playing as the Kutsk and the Presidium of, so the, of the Supreme Soviet. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead, in which I will let you go ahead and read all the way down here as well. And then we'll begin because we have a certain Valerie that we need to take out very early on in this campaign. It's unfortunate for him that he's got to go... <clears throat> bye bye. Onwards, so let's begin the focus before we start killing them off. The response. Comrades, brothers and sisters, workers and peasants of the Akutsk Oblast, on behalf of the Soviet Presidium, we ask you to remain vigilant as if, as the very existence of the Soviet motherland is at stake. Taking advantage of our weakness against the forces of Radzevsky, or Radzevsky and Pasternak, deserters and traitors under the leadership of Valery Sablin are attempting to organize a revisionist insurgency, raising a dark and brutal mob to his ignoble cause and forcibly mobilizing them to commit unspeakable crimes against the working people. In the Temmerberg's existential challenge to our beloved Union, we ask you to not succumb to provocations of the Sablinite counter-revolutionaries and direct all of your efforts to fight the internal enemy. We warn you that the Soviet power will remain unshakable in its merciless attitude towards treason. Any person engaged in the anti-Soviet activities or involved in encouraging or harboring the insurgents will be held accountable and be subjected to the most severe punishment. Which is good. Before we begin, we do have four divisions. We have four factories. We have two motorized, two normal infantry, which is not too bad, actually. The 12 combat with and Soblin here. Oh, 100% wholesome Chungus Sobli, Soblin dude, the last century. He has a good amount of manpower, three factories, and six divisions, but most of them are malicious. So we'll see what happens. Division per division, we should do okay. We just got to keep an eye on where his divisions move, and we'll just defend down here as well. So let's see what happens. I hope we do okay. And what are they doing? They're moving into there, which is not bad. And they're not moving, which is fine. We're moving into here. So Legacy of the Union. The young child carelessly wandered the rooms of the house, as always, noticing even the tiniest detail. After hours of exploration, he came across a small chest inside it. One could find a grand collection of glamorous medals, photos, and documents. The boy turned to his father and asked him what those were. Some old things from the glory days, he said. One item had caught his attention, though, a shiny red and gold medal. This one is the Order of Lenin, answered the father before the boy could even open his mouth. Who's Lenin, the child asked. The NKVD guard prepared to take the official to the presidium looked at him and could not help but smile. A great man, perhaps if he was still alive, we wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. Wars, deaths, the oppression of the masses. It could have all been avoided. You need to remember, son, that it is up to us to continue his work. Before you were born, the true rulers of the motherland fell to the invader in Moscow, but we, the members of the Presidium, saved it with the help of Comrade Yagoda and his friends and fled to Irkutsk. Why are all these awful things happening? Why can't we be happy? The story of how we got here is not a simple one, but, but but you must learn it. First, the Germans came, with their tanks and bombs. They invaded the motherland and enslaved millions, in ending Bukharin's rule. Then came the rich and their intellectuals, who fought us when we were in the dire straits, and ended the chances of reclaiming the nation with the Siberian War. Next were the Japanese puppets, who came from the east, and the final blow was the mutiny across the lake. We are only the only ones left to continue what Lenin started. So they all made this happen? Yes, son, yes, they all did. And Comrade Yagoda will make sure they will all pay for it. Good, good, good. And actually, if we really wanted to, we could, if we move fast, we could get right here too. And that is the capital, Varknudinsk. Vark Let's go there. A split in the family. My fa calling is to the east, Papa. I'm sorry. Boldreyev. Boldreyev stared into his son. His face was hard as iron, his eyes a piercing blade. For the briefest moment, he did not know what to say. Ten years he served Yagoda, ten years he had risen through the ranks of the NKVD. Blood stained his hands, but long had he rationalized it during sleepless nights. It was absolutely necessary. It was his duty before that, just uh, as a boy of just 17. He fought and bled for the Bolsheviks in the Great Civil War. He promised his life to the revolution until the very end of his days. Now here was his son, about to betray the nation that Boldrev had a hand in forging with eyes that pleaded to his father, let me go, let me fight for what is right. Boldrev sighed, setting a hand upon his son's shoulder. I was only a bit younger than you when I too bled for Lenin, he began. In those days, I asked myself one question every single night. Was I fighting for the right side? What if I had made a horrible mistake? He shook his head, smiling. I followed what my heart desired. I followed the passion that guided me, and it led me to the socialist revolution. Boldrev swallowed and un suddenly uneasy of what he was about to say. No matter who won the struggle, his words would doom him. But cruel men corrupted it, my son, and they brought me down a path I should have never followed. I am old now, and my passion is dried. His eyes met with his son's, and tears swelled. Follow your heart, my son. Do what you believe is right. Do not be constrained by old feeble men like me, but hold your comrades accountable as I should have. His son nodded, and the eagerness that filled his face was now mixed with longing. I will, Papa, he said, as he watched his son step out of the house into Baratia. Boldrev feared that he had killed him, 
yet he cannot restrain his boy like he did so many others. His fate was for himself to choose now. There was only one hopeless wish he had left. Please come back home. Oh boy. <coughs> and we currently do have the Natural Spirits, a bitter remnant, which is pretty good. More daily political power, 0.91 is not terrible. And KVD, uh, Syrocracy, interesting. More decryption, I like that. And the Kutsk Hydroelectric Dam, which is very, very good, actually. All right, since we're here, we'll try to move into the territory and hopefully not get beaten up along the way. Hey, we found their militia, and we will stop them at the river. And then once they're stopped, yeah, we'll just attack them too. If they're not moving, I'm kind of okay with that. So we can go there maybe. Because obviously with 4v6, four four, four it's not a great situation to be in. So just keep them in place. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, actually you still might be able to win down here. Maybe not. I'd love to do it on circumvent, but maybe we cannot. The response in the trenches, or support in the capital, and the shadows. Oh, well, I want to get more stability. Minus 19% is not very good. We get more guns. A division of elite and NKVD guards would be really nice. Construction speed for three days. That's not bad. And the Presidium. All these look really not too bad. Black operations. En enhanced intelligence. I do want to get some extra divisions, but in the trenches. The soldiers of the Union have endured the unimaginable, and we must now ask them to endure more. They are our shield against the traitors and partisans who seek to finish what the Germans started all those years ago. If the Union is to survive, we have to do everything we can to support the men fighting on the front line for our cause. By ensuring deliveries of food, equipment, and weapons reliably make it on time to the soldiers who need them, we can make the hellish conditions, the conditions of Siberian warfare, slightly more bearable. We can cycle between frontline and reserve duty, allowing them to recover and fight more effectively when it is time to return to the battlefield. We cannot let our moral falter in the face of yet another threat. Now, we don't want to kill them off too fast, but putting down the traitors. The past decades have been an unrelenting disaster for true patriots of the motherland. Revolutionary morals, uh, p values paid for dearly in the tight streets of Leningrad, and the long rails of Novo Sobirsk have not been sufficiently practiced or defended. The results are cataclysmic. From bickering politicians who refuse to act in the face of fascist banded armies to the near collapse against the counter-revolutionary Republicans in the 50s, much has been lost. Millions of lives have been sacrificed unwillingly by those who would dare to neglect the lessons of the October Revolution. The Burat Sablonites are next in the long line of the ideological rot. It is a rot that is clearly spread beyond control, as Valerie Sablon himself was once a promising NKVD comm commissar. After being foolishly entrusted to organize labor and the construction of hydroelectric power near the Lake Baikal, he sees a radio tower to spew his utopian con convenient revisionism. You go to end the loyal remnants of the Presidium bear gargantuan weight upon their shoulders. Years of defeat have left the Union crippled, and as people susceptible to opportunists and liars, it is all too possible that this burgeoning rebel army could spire out of control and spell doom for the last remnant of order and legitimacy in this Russian chaos. The scared peasants who tremble beneath Sablon's lies must be convinced to return to their senses, and the conniving men who lead them must be brought to swift justice. We will do what must be done. Two brothers, Alexei and Sergei Maximovich. Maximovich embraced warmly in the candlelight of their late father's basement. It was a long way past curfew, and Sergei had been forced to sneak his way slowly through the abandoned streets of Severobyskosk. Their father, a loving but stern man while respected within Yagoda's party, had died many years earlier. He had left both of his sons keys to the property, and they had come here often since his death to catch up and reminisce. Both of them knew this time was different. They both pulled up chairs and sat across from each other and poured themselves tall glasses of vodka. I know what you have called me here for, Alexei, Sergei began, preempting his brother's plea. You know what my answer will be. Just hear what I have to say, he replied. His tone laced with sadness. There's no way out of this for you rebels, Sergei. Yagoda's going to crush Sablon's little rebellion in a matter of weeks. If you walk away now, I can make sure that you don't end up in the firing squad. Oh yes, I'm sure you will be able to use your position in the NKVD to get me off. But that represents everything that is wrong with Yagoda's regime, Alexei. The NKVD runs rampant, crushing dissent, killing anybody in its path with impunity, its agents routinely abusing their power for personal gain. Sablon is right. This is not Lenin's so so Soviet Union. There has to be a better way. Listen to yourself, Sergei Yagoda, and the NKVD are the only thing that have kept Lenin's Soviet Union alive. You think that the Union would have survived a single year against the warlords and the fascists if not for Yagoda? The NKVD is the only thing keeping our enemies at bay. Whatever you tell yourself to keep you asleep or help you sleep at night, Sergei said bitterly, downing his vodka and rising from his chair. Next time we see each other, it is as enemies. The brothers parted without another word into the cold Siberian night, a tale as old as time. <sighs> That is that is a little sad, not gonna lie, that is a little sad. But it is what it is, it must be done. Can we actually win against them? They are only militia. We might be able to Uh yeah, it looks like we might be able to. The modern bugateer, if you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Interesting story, if nothing else. Oh, are they attacking us now? Or where are you guys headed? North? Uh go over here so we can encircle these guys a little bit faster. I would prefer to use my my motorized, but whatever. And they're looking not too good, so you actually might be able to break over the line. Oh, never mind, there's oh that's a lot of visions. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six divisions, baby, that's a lot. 
in the trenches. Nice. And the Ministry of Defense. The partisan's rebellion must be quickly crushed without mercy or hesitation. To this effect, your go has ordered the Ministry of Defense to immediately shift the nation to a war footing until the Eastern Rebellion has been fully stamped out. Certain areas of the economy will shift production to military materials, while others will continue to operate, but in a modified fashion. Military rations will be temporarily prioritized over the civilian food supply, while several factories currently producing civilian goods will begin being converted to weapon foundries. Another step the Ministry of Defense has been ordered to take is the issuing of the museum pieces. These antiquated weapons date back to before the Second World War and have, have until been now been kept in storage. The Ministry will issue these weapons to our reserve units focused on hunting down partisans operating in our own territory. Good. We no, don't need that. I don't know why I'm going to see this anymore, but Hitler, Blast Strike, Loot. Oh, Aftermath of the Union. Oh, I forgot about this one. Balance of Power. Oh. Two factions make up the government of the USSR. The party faction made, made much of the Presidium advocates for the proletarian state to become subordinate to the will of the party, as well as was argued by Lenin. For the state faction, however, is in favor of op the opposite approach. The party is subordinate to the origins, the organs of state power. Okay. Favor of the state for now, which we'll probably do that one. We can close out this one, too. We probably want to do the state. The state is and is the ultimate power here. Alright, so we're going to cut them off. And we're basically cutting ourselves off. Which is not great. But whatever. Actually, um, yeah, get up there first. And how are we doing down here? We're doing okay. Are they actually helping out? Yep, they're trying to get down south. That sucks. Come on. Please, don't circle us. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Break them. How are you not over there yet, guys? Come on, go. Alright, not bad. And help them out. Before they can rescue... Oh, we got them. We got them, sons. And go in there next. First division has been eliminated. If that's the case, go and hold for now. Because they're going to reinforce the area anyway, so... That's okay. We actually got them. Nice job, guys. And then the NKVD guard detachments. In the Union's darkest hour, it was the NKVD that rescued the Presidium and evacuated it to Irkutsk. Now, when we are forced to fight for survival once more, the NKVD shall deliver us victory again. Some of the most experienced soldiers in our nation are members of the NKVD guards. Currently, these men are scattered in small groups across the country, serving as bodyguards, intelligence officers, and secret police, but they could be of greater use if we organize them into full military divisions. This new NKVD motor rifle division will be the tip of the spear that will skewer the traitors with it. With it. The ragtag bandits won't stand a chance against the discipline and ruthlessness of the finest soldiers of the Soviet Union. Once we have defeated the partisans, this new division will be instrumental to our reclamation of Siberia and eventually all of Russia. Good. I get some more map art too, which, is, which should be good for later on. Hello! You want to do that, eh? No, 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 no. Let them attack us. Let them attack us. Come on. Hey, they're actually got over the tree, so we have to attack them. That sucks. Well, that's the case. Uh, actually, you guys could probably just go straight on in. Actually, this might be really good for us. Boom, boom. You guys hold for now. Don't worry about it. You actually might be able to go in there too, so. Since they are somewhat recovering from the attack. Okay, never mind. Move, 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 and cut them all off. This is extremely dangerous, and we're going to go right there next. Cool. Don't let them move. Do not let them move. Both of you guys, I don't care what happens over here. NKVD guard detachments. Nice. In the shadows, I would like to get some more stability. Political power, though, is really, really important. An extra military factory, though. Oh, that's even better, though. Irkutsk is the main economic and industrial hub of eastern Siberia, but we've been hurt by the rebellion. Large portions of the military industrial, military industry and infrastructure have fallen under the control of Sovlin's bandits at the moment when we need them the most. To make up for this, the director of construction will have to make some accommodations for our military. Factory space that would have otherwise gone to other projects have been cleared for military production. Infrastructure projects that will benefit the military have been accelerated while civilian constructions have been postponed indefinitely until we have re recovered our stolen industry. We must get everything we have uh, out of what remains. We have to keep our army supplied and on the move no matter the cost. It's been a long time since I've actually played as this unit, or or, or at least Soblin. I've never played as this unit before, the, you know, Yagoda. But I, I remember I wanted to do a lot of this stuff that, even for Soblin, I think he has something like this as well. Uh, the stuff on the right side doesn't really matter too much, actually. More manpower would be nice, like I said. But let's get into the shadows to get more stability, because it's free, basically free stability. And free manpower would be really nice. Even though we might actually have to get all this stuff done. We'll see what happens. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But my goal is at least to encircle all of our, these divisions here. Just because uh, that will make it easier so we can stay here for as long as we need to. So, Oh, we have... Oh, crap. You abandoned that air... Why? No, 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 no. You get back down here, you piece of garbage. You get back down here immediately. You know, it's good. You, oh, crap. We gotta go in. That's so bad. That's so bad. That's so bad. Why? Why did you abandon that? You left the capital open. At least they're not moving down there. You piece of garbage. Absolute piece of garbage, man. No front line here. 
Well, can we at least finish this up first, maybe? Hopefully. Jesus Christ. Ah. Oh. oh, we got it done. So let's give it a few days first and see what happens. And let's do equipment. Beautiful. The party. No, we wanted the state. I want absolute control. And increases the party influence. No. Party state influence. State, state, state. Uh, when selected, new political commissars shall be appointed to high-level positions within the Red Army to ensure the potential or political reliability of its officers. Unreliable officers will be subjected to expulsion from the Communist Party or removal from their posts. More daily PP, lose war support, more division defense. I think it's worth it. Usually I don't like to do stuff uh, in this stage of the uh, reclamation of Russia, but I like that. We get more daily political power, that'll pay for itself, hopefully. So we got up until... Oh, we took it. Now, where's the capital? Is this a capital? I'm gonna wait a little bit. No, they still have. Uh, actually, well, we really do need a frontline system here, so. Go and recover for now, that's fine. And if we have to do another one, that's fine too. We'll do this one. We'll get more construction speed, more manpower. We all, oh, actually, you know what? Let's get shadows just in case. The greatest weapon left in our arsenal is our intelligence apparatus. When Russia fractured, it was the agents of the NKVD who kept the Union alive and carved out a new home for the revolution in Irkutsk. The operatives and spies of the NKVD are some of the most experienced in the world. The time has come to use them against Soblin and his gang of traitors and tear apart the upstart rebellion from within. The fragile new government across Lake Baikal has a perfect target for infiltration and sabotage. It is run by inexperienced amateurs trying to figure out how to run a nation as they go. Our agents will have no trouble infiltrating it by possessing his, posing as traitors or double agents. And in many cases, they won't even need to hide their identities. Before long, the partisans will be in disarray. With all their plants and secrets laid bare before us. Great. Seriously, how do you suck this hard? And I don't want to leave here because that would be very bad for us. But these guys should actually be able to do okay. And you guys should actually be able to do okay then too. Well, that's over the river, which would be very bad, but whatever. Um... In the capital. Salvin's rebellions expose the key weaknesses with the intercept for government. It's a travesty that the traitors managed to advance their cause to this point without the institutions of the state managing to stamp them out. Immediate steps must be taken to make sure that the holes in the government that led to this present situation are plugged. Once the partisans have been crushed, the government must be ready to quickly reintegrate the territory they stole from us and crack down on any remaining dissent that may emerge. We must show, we must also begin a review of our government to see how this rebellion has kept our notice. This will not be allowed to happen again, not if the Union is to have any hope of surviving. Nice. 57-3, not bad. Keep these guys in place for now. We actually still might be able to win there. And take all the territory down here. Actually, take all the VPs. Just go for the VPs and such. Oh, now they're starving. They're trying to get out. Yeah, no. Wow, we're looking really bad here. Actually, do you have any upgrades? He, hopefully he does. We want more infantry attack, probably. Yeah. There you go. Now that should guarantee you success, right? Let's get you closer, right? Alright. Not bad. Boom, boom, boom. And we should have him done. Hopefully. Oh, did they make another... They literally made another division. Now that's a capital. Okay, then. And the capital. And then uh, supplemental labor battalions. And the Presidium? Yeah, let's do that one. The necessary reforms to our apparatus of the state will be handled by the Presidium of the Soviet Union. In these troubled times, the Presidium can serve as a beacon of stability to guide us through the storm. While the military and the NKVD handle the matter of crushing the rebellion, the politicians of the Presidium will work to make sure that normalcy is maintained as much as possible in a time of war. Investigations into the Presidium itself must also take place, both internal and external. If any traitors remain hidden within our government, we must sniff them out. More important than that, though, is the lack of oversight within the Presidium that allowed the Rebellion's leaders to continue their plot. In the new Presidium, such things will not be possible. Go anything else up here? Reunification of Russia. Now we're kind of okay with, with everything else for now. And we got them! Not bad. Wasn't great, but Salvin Zem. Yugoda felt the cold flee from his body as his rage grew. It was pure hate or rage, so diffused in its targets that its potency overwhelmed his mind. He was angry at a great many things and a great many people, and today made him especially furious. It was important that such rage was directed, and at this precise moment, it landed upon the guard to his right. A single stare leveled the man, his slow posture rapidly corrected itself, and the incessant tapping of the foot ceased that would do. His composure regained, Yugoda's eyes returned to the malnourished creature that sat before him. The foolish boy who refused to break or even bend. A lesser man might be swayed by such a display, but Yagoda was not impressed by traitors. He had seen too many. His hands clasped together on the table, and he stared into Sablin's lowered eyes. I tire of the spectacle. You've been offered a chance to repent your crimes, to show the people the error of your ways, and heal the union you fractured. Yagoda noticed a fire flash across the young man's face, the same spark that he had observed upon detainment. He remained defiantly silent. Maybe you perceive yourself as a brave man? I know better. Enough time has been wasted. There's much to be done beyond this petty revolt. If you wish for death, so be it. 
His hands rose from the table, and upon his motioning, Salvin was carried away. The new union would have no room for such foolish men. Utopians, revisionists, and squabbling politicians would no longer be allowed to destroy the dream fought for so long. If the union was to reclaim life from the fascists, it would have to be stronger. This time, he would make sure it was good riddance. Oh, boy, that does not look good. Oh, boy. Uh, but we gotta do that. Do we have to do all these? I'm not really sure. Um... I, I don't know, so... Oh, oh, nope, I was correct. It does get rid of that. So the Union victorious. The people of the Soviet Union have done it, comrades. The rebellious Salvanites have been utterly smashed, and we have emerged victorious from the battle in full glory. We have proven our strength once more, and showing our neighbors that we will not go down without a fight. However, just because the battle has been finished does not mean that this, that this is time for celebration. It is time for us to regroup and bring justice to the Salvanites. It is time for the USSR to cut the final piece of thread that our opposition dangles off of, and to show the Salvinists that we, the people of the Union, still remain vigilant and powerful, even in our most dire states. And we must integrate Baratia as soon as possible. Um, anyone have treasure? Alden would be re Alden or Cheetah would actually probably be really good to beat the crap out of. But at least we have five divisions, and even though we're lacking actually quite a bit of equipment already, which is not good at all. Except we have, we have quite a few guns. Quite a few guns, actually. Not bad. Well, if that's the case, let's go read the next one, too. Lessons from the Mutiny. Lessons from their spirit. Lessons from Soblin. The Great Purge. Rebuilding our legacy. Ooh. Daily political power goes down. Weekly stability goes up, though. Ooh. Party's influence. Yeah, sir. For this one, I think I want to go uh, state influence. If we play you a goat again sometime, rem please remind me. We need to go party influence. So, as much as I'd love to do that. People's Union. A secure union. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Let's go rebuilding our legitimacy. The great and powerful Soviet Union has been shattered, and we've all but disintegrated on the world stage. This is a cat catastrophe for every person within the Union. <clears throat> we've been torn apart from the inside ever since the German invasion of our Union, falling apart piece by piece until we've been diminished to our current state. But we won't give up so easily with such a setback. In order to accomplish our goals, our government's legitimacy must be restored, back to when we were truly recognized as the leaders of Russia. No matter the means that we are to take our approach for the reclamation of the Union, we must regain our spot amongst the great powers once more and return the people of Russia to the rightful place on the world stage. Absolutely, as we get more research speed and do our land auction too. That'd be very good. Scavenge for loot would be great. And if people want to beat us for our loot, let them try to beat us. We will beat them back. And make sure that we're actually making more divisions. I think for, really for the early game, for any campaign, I don't always do this, but I think it's better if you get more divisions. Not necessarily great divisions, but at least more divisions to help hold the line. All done. Yes, please. How strong are these guys? Two divisions. They're militias. This, uh, you feel kind of bad beating up these guys over here, but then again, we've got goals, and that means we got to beat people up. So be it. Whatever. We'll get over it. They refuse tribute, so be it. Fine with us. And actually, with these guys... Eh, I don't want to use that. Actually, we can probably remove it. There you go. Oh. Actually, military police would be better to use. It still uses support equipment, but it actually is not too bad. Do we actually have any spare support equipment, or can we just get rid of it? We have no spare support equipment, so just remove it for now. It's fine. It'll save us equipment, hopefully. Maybe not so much manpower, but at least equipment. There you go. Good. And we'll do rebuilding our legitimacy. And I'll get extra political power as fast as possible. 0.36 is so bad. And we're successful. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And persuade the party faction. We'll probably do that one. But 57 is pretty good already. An internal affair. One of the core tenets of Leninism is a vanguard party. The party exists to protect the people from the capitalists and help instill ca class consciousness. In order to achieve this goal, only the most educated and politically advanced people can run the higher functions of the state, not the average worker. To directly involve the people could risk needless inefficiency at a critical time, especially as we reorganize the Union. We must rely only on ourselves to reform the state, not the people, as to maintain our Leninist ideals and prevent needless corruption along with these false consciousness from ending the Union, a death in the family. Baldrif had spent a few nights now sleeplessly after Salvin's ultimate defeat. Even as he went about his day, his anxiety only barely keeping up with his exhaustion, he looked at the front door whenever... He could, hoping to hear a knock from his one and only son, hoping beyond that he had escaped, captured by Yagoda's thugs, uh, Alisa. Bless her soul, worried about his own restlessness, even if she tried to hide it. If he knew Yagoda, though, and he did all too well, then he was not the only one she should be worried about. Their son was in great danger than most people could imagine. As Baldurav was reading a book early in the night, trying to calm himself and finally get some sleep, a knock came. He nearly fell on the floor trying to get up and ran so quickly to the door he feared he might trip. When he reached the door and opened it, however, the excitement on his face vanished. This was not a son, this was an NKVD officer. His stare cold and unfeeling, a letter for you, comrade. Baldurav opened it, fear quickly built.
floating down to his very bones, it was a letter. First one thanking him for his years of service to the NKVD, then. It went on to explain that his son's body had been discovered at the site of the final capture Soblin, identified by old NKVD friends of Baldurev who had known his son as a child. It was signed by Yagoda personally. Baldurev collapsed to his knees, tears streaming out of his eyes which stared after the retreating back of the NKVD officer. It was useless, utterly useless. Nobody could oppose Yagoda, gosh darn his name, yet he had been foolish enough to let his son try. It was a choice he would regret for the rest of his days. Even when Elisa, who had been woken by the commotion, came to comfort him, he barely felt it. He barely felt anything at all. Man, that, that, is, that does not feel good. I got chills running down my spine with that. Oh man, that is... That's... That's, that's big... I don't know. Hmm. That is not... That is not wholesome. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. That Oh man, that is a terrible feeling to have. Just god awful. Hmm. Not good. Ooh. But anyways, we must continue on for the glory of the USSR. Oh, Magadan is having issues with Amur. And that's okay with us. Anything else? We can't raid, of course. I don't do any more of this because we're at 57 already, so... A bolster and KVD presence. While we managed to prevent ourselves from being conquered, the fact of the matter is that lawlessness is all too common here, especially in the outskirts of our territory, away from our centers of control. In order to rectify the situation, a decision has been made to increase NKVD patrols and increase their presence in the outskirts. An open showing of security will force the criminals to retreat underground <clears throat> and allow us to reassert our authority. Furthermore, we shall step up our duties of the NKVD from a law enforcement perspective, allowing them to assert their authority and beat back the lawlessness that has plagued our outer lands for too long. <clears throat> My apologies. I, this one gives us some good stuff, but only for a year, which kind of sucks. I wish it was for longer, but it's fine. Oh, wait. Oh, I read that one. We need to do an internal affair. My bad. One of the core tenets of Leninism is a vanguard party. The party exists to protect people from the capitalists and help instill class consciousness. In order to achieve this goal, only the most educated... Oh, I already read this one. Oh, my goodness. I apologize. Yeah, people can run the higher function of the state and not the average worker. My apologies. I am... I apologize. I, apparently, I'm mentally slipping right now, so... After that one event, I'm like, whoa, what's going on now? Oh boy, that shook me, man. That really did. So, my apologies for not being tuned in with where I need to be right now. But, I guess I already read this one, so... If, maybe I'll do that one again, please go ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and do a security unit. I'll get as much PP as possible. I think that'd be good. And get better consumer goods factories. Encryption would be awesome as well. The existence of the warlords throughout Russia has damaged many things, but perhaps the greatest thing lost is security. The people do not trust interstate's ability to ensure their safety anymore, which is thoroughly disheartening. We need to assure the people with propaganda speeches and initiatives that the USSR merely seeks to build socialism from within, nurturing it in order to protect the people. Furthermore, we must ensure that people understand that the Presidium and Yagoda do not exist just to be a distant ruler, but to ensure your safety and security in a time when that is it is all too rare. By increasing the rate of patrols throughout the cities, and having increased presence of security in the countryside, we can hopefully express that yes, we will be able to keep the people safe. Actually, how strong is Cheetah? 6,000 manpower, 3 divisions, we uh, I don't know, that seems, that is a river, so I don't want to do it when we just can, so, we can do it against the Siberian Black Army too, eventually, so, not bad. Pizza party, fit 60 to 40, not too shabby, we're still building up some civvies over here, and eventually we'll build up some of the roads here too, because that, that's a lot of rich resources over there, ooh, what do we have, scavenge for loot, yes please. No, secure union, renew central authority, slide decrease scoring time, a strengthened mandate, and we'll do the Irkutsk trial soon too. So, And we'll do these three main ones too, and continuing course, which will be muy bueno, as some might say. And we got a little more than two months for that. All right, anything else here? Um, no one has enough treasure for now. Oh, has not been raided in the past three months. Well, we actually might be able to do that relatively soon, so that'd be really good to do. Nice. So let's just do these guys. Uh, Amur, Magadan. Amur's not... This is... Uh, the Far East is not an easy, you know, region to play in. And Moore, when I played them with Rojevsky, which you should totally go check out, was a lot of fun. Except for the first episode with this group here. That was really difficult. And Moore is not easy. Oh, baby. Oh, we have your loot. I guess they might have used it. Well, now I guess they use your loot. Why did everyone use their loot? Come on, man. You're supposed to get loot so you can give it to me. Oh, that actually is really, really bad. How much did we get? 0.5? Oh, my goodness. That is painful. I just want to raid people, man. And it's more secure union. Do we need all three of these? Yeah, we do. Cool. That's actually really good. That's a really good uh, national spear for us. 
but will continue with renewed central authority. Even after the mutiny ended, there was still a large amount of discontent in the Baratia territories. Furthermore, the mutinies required us to basically rebuild the bureaucracy, as we could not truly ensure the loyalty of many of the Baratian bureaucrats. However, as we've increased patrols and begun the process of reintegrating, the discontent from Baratia slowly died down, eventually dissipating entirely. Finally, our efforts have paid off as the Baratian lands have been fully reintegrated. Great! Slowly decreased scoring time? That's awesome. 60-40, not bad. So you can minister. Oh! Um, more daily pickle power for 50. Consumer goods goes down. Production efficiency retention goes down, but more factory output. Does this... Oh, does this leave us? The authority of the Gulag Agency shall be expanded, while greater allowances will be made for the use of forced labor. Construction speed. Wow, I kind of like these. Strength. I like more political power and consumer goods and factory output. Um, let's see what happens. It gives us 61, and does, this is a national spirit, right? Yeah. Actually, this does not expire. So, actually, I really like these. Oh, we have not passed reform. So, these are reforms that we can do right now. That's actually really cool. I kind of actually pre would have preferred to do this one, but you know what? Getting 0.5 or 0.15 more political power every single day and better consumer goods for retention? Whatever. Cheetah. Cheetah, cheetah, baby. Cheetah. Sons and guns. Come on, guys. You are going to win, especially against our guy, Ivan Maslenikov. Ma Maslenikov? No, nah, definitely not. Well, this is why we want to bait him in, and we can t go do, do it against the Black Army. Nice. Five days left. Not bad. Are we fully prepared? Pretty much. Come on over, big boys. See what you can do, you false Tsar. A secure union. Very good. Renewed central authority. Actually, they have no loot anyway, so that's fine. Well, we can't do anything about this now, so strength and mandate. It seems that all of our efforts have paid off. The strengthening of security, combined with the propaganda showcasing the fact that the Presidium cares for the people, has allowed us to require a new mandate. The people will trust us more and more and believe that we are the best path towards Russia. Good. Even in Baratia, the people now trust us over Soblin. This new sense of legitimacy means that we can embark on further efforts without having to worry about discontent from the people. The USSR may have been brought low, but we will restore its glory. Alexei grunted as the back... As his back struck the ground a yard or two below the rocks he had ever so carefully tried to maneuver over just moments before. Training had consumed most of the day, but it was relatively calm compared to the other days. As the bulk of today's training had wrapped up, the officers had sent Alexei to fetch some things from camp. Walking there, the 23-year-old had tried to walk along the rocks like a child trying to keep their balance on a brick barrier. Digging his gloved hands into the snow behind him, the young soldier hauled himself into an upright position. Now face red and battered by the bitter winds, he found himself staring out at Lake Baikal from its bank. Dusting snow off his coat, he kept his eyes on the horizon. Couldn't hurt to sit here for a second, he argued, opening his satchel with a pop and retrieving his canteen. Alexei watched the stars begin to shine brighter in the sky shift from purple to inky black over the course of 15 minutes. Just as he began to stand up, something white darted past his vision. Riding himself, his eyes followed the blur to the edge of the stones where now a rabbit, white as a pure driven snow, munched on a plant struggling to grow in the frozen soil. Completely undisturbed by his presence, the bunny watched it clear like water. Alexei remembered his childhood pets, animals he had found out or found in the woods that his mother forced him to abandon. Hunching down, he produced his can canteen once again and began pouring water into a small divot in the snow. Still undeterred by the larger creature's presence, the rabbit simply hopped, hopped over and began to drink peacefully. Glancing left and right, assuring that there was no one watching him, the soldier scooped it up, opening back up his satchel with the same pop and placed it in. Gripping the rocks, he scaled back over and began to walk back to camp, carefully prepared to be chewed out by the brass. I'll call him Maxim. Or Maxim. Maxim. Maxime, bunny, rabbit, animal. Nice. And the multi conference. Cool. Good luck. Alright, so I wonder how much damage we did to the cheetah. How much manpower do they have left now? Three divisions. That's not bad. I just, I'm worried that if we attack, they have land forts and rivers and stuff like that. Anyone have stuff? Uh, so, so bring black territory, black, black army. They're out of manpower, so that's actually really good. Six to eight divisions up. Uh, we could we could risk it. We could definitely risk it if we really wanted to. We don't have enough decryption on them though. Hmm. That's not really bueno. Oh, People's Revolutionary Council. How strong are these guys? Nine divisions. Wow. Yeah, definitely not them. Oh well, now they're out of loot. Oh, scavenger loot, then. Well, that sucks. But at least we get a mandate strength to get more stability. That's always nice to get. 
Oh boy. Yeah, I don't want to beat those guys up. That's that's a bit extreme. We're only five divisions. We're definitely going to need more. Um, what else are we lacking here? Artillery, anti-tank, motorized. Just pretty much all the normal stuff that we're lacking. Hmm. We need central authority. Good. And a strength of mandate. So right now, for society, we're improving our industry, equipment, and agriculture. Everything else is pretty much stagnant. Academic base is just barely going up. Poverty is slowly getting slightly worse. And expertise is going up as well, which is not too bad. A day of rest. Pavel sat in his boat in the waters of Lake Baikal, his pole ha banging ha or hanging lazily in his hands. He had been on the water since the sunrise. Unlike most days, today he had a passenger. The, the man was a stranger, certainly from the west, and paid it well to join him in a small fishing boat. Pavel watched him from the corner of his eye. The stranger had cast his rod and was now leaning back into his chair, a local ale in his hand. What's your name, kid? He asked to break up the silence. The stranger seemed startled and hesitant to reply. After a minute, he replied with a quiet Alexander before going back to nursing his ale. Pavel simply nodded. A good name, Alexander. A strong name. Where are you from? I don't recognize your accent. Pavel was interested. He rarely had company on his fishing trips and wanted to make the most of it. Again, Alexander seemed surprised. With even more hesitation than the last time he spoke, I'm from the west, far to the west, past Moscow. Something strange passed in his eyes as he looked out over the waters. Pavel was curious. He had grown up in western Russia under the Tsar, and yet he could not, for the life of him, place Alexander's accent, as faint as it may have been. Well, you certainly come a long way. Let me be the first to welcome you to Baikalia. It's a beautiful place if you can ignore the tyrant. Never mind. Pavel was quick to change the subject in case the man was one of your goat's dogs. Have any family? Alexander looked pensive, and a great sadness could be seen in his eyes for a moment. I did. They're gone now. It's been ten years. He seemed surprised at his reply, as though he could not believe it could have been so long ago. My father used to take me fishing when I was a boy. I did not often allow myself many pleasures, but I thought I would honor him today. Pavel looked at the man with new understanding, turning back to his pole and Ale let Alexander enjoy the quiet. A quiet day on the Baikal and the Great Purge. The Soviet Union cannot allow counter-revolutionary revolt on this scale to ever occur again. If Russia is to ever rise from the ashes and show the Union as a stable entity, then our regional administrations must not allow these rebels to ever rise up against our government. We need to strike the source of the problem the incompetent and corrupt. A Great Purge is sorely needed to ensure our government stays indivisible. Those officials that are incompetent to lead and administrate must be gathered up. What awaits them will either be a firing squad, a lifetime in prison, or expulsion from the party depending on the heinousness of the crimes. For the especially corrupt, however, an appointment at the back of the shed and a bull in the head would be the most befitting course of action. One cannot have a stable union if its people are being rep represented so incompetently. Absolutely. As we keep an eye on who we can beat up, because there's not that many people we can beat up right now. And that's super big sadness. Oh! Cheater. Uh, uh. I'm mean, gonna try it. And they don't have that much manpower, right? They, oh, they do have five. Uh, <laughs> if we do try against these guys, we need the guy who's really good on attack. Level four is good. The field marshal won't really matter probably too much. Ooh, what can we do now? Uh, oh, we did this stuff. Let's do more equipment. I want to maximize that out as fast as possible. Persuade the party. Now we're okay. So 61-39 is still pretty good. Uh, yeah, we could do that. Let's get some more organization first. They might just fold anyway, so we'll see what happens. I kind of doubt we'll win, so... It's probably a really bad idea, but... It is what it is. Hey, we got some more organization, too. That's actually really good, then. 10% more... Or 10% more defense, 5 more organization. And a little more entrenchment, too. Pretty good. Not too bad. Could be a lot worse. The Great Purge. Assemble the commission. Recall suspect personnel. Oh, we actually lose more political power. Assemble the commission. It is crucial that we enact a purge to effectively remove the filth lurking with our framework. In order to do so, however, we will establish a commission that is able to collect info from the suspected officials and disposing of them through any means necessary. The members of the commission, however, cannot be composed of regular NKVD officials in fear of them compromising our efforts. So we'll have to scout and recruit talented individuals from within the NKVD's ranks that possesses uh, necessary skills in order for our plans to come into fruition. After all, it would be impossible to commit to our internal purges without a proper commission to handle the dirty work and service to the, of the people of the USSR. We'll try it. That's a, probably a really bad idea. Come on, we got him, right? We can do it, right? Yeah, maybe? Maybe? This is looking good so far. We're only level 2 attack. Why did you get a garbage general, man? We do have an intel advantage, which is very helpful. Oh, we do have another division too. Go, go, go. Oh, we... Can you join in? Yes, you can. Get in there, get in there, get in there, get in there. Before they get that extra third division in. Oh, it looks like we're slowly winning faster. Slowly winning faster. Come on, the Great Purge. Come ready, Yagoda. You wish to speak with me? Pavel Bulanov asked as he stepped into Yagoda's office. The office was... The door was pulled shut behind him and the 
room was now silent. Save for the clock on Yagoda's desk. Have a seat, Comrade Bolinov. Genric Yagoda always had a humorous look about him, but there was something especially troubling with about his demeanor this time. Comrade Bolinov, I'm sure you're aware by now that I'm rather displeased with the state of my administration. Bolinov could only guess where this was headed. Yes, of course, Comrade. I have heard rumors. Allow me to reveal to you how I feel, really feel them. I'm absolutely livid, Bulanov. Ever since we defeated Salvin's merry band of traitors, it has become painfully clear that I'm surrounded by corrupt buffoons who couldn't run an office to save their lives. Although Yogoda did not raise his voice, his eyes betrayed a great anger. I see, have you tried scheduling a meeting? Perhaps we could speak sense into them, comrade. Yogoda frowned and continued to bash my head against a wall. Come on now, Bolinov. I wouldn't have asked for my security chief or... If I tended to reason with these people. Yagoda then pushed a folder across his desk towards Bolinov. This is a dossier of troublemakers I've been gathering for some time. I want the NKVD to start a full investigation as soon as possible. Bolinov noticed a smaller piece of paper attached to the folder. Upon closer inspection, it was a list of names and instructions. And what is this for, Comrade Yagoda? Those are the people I want behind bars or in front of a firing squad by tomorrow morning. I don't want my intentions to be misinterpreted by anyone. Comrade Bulanov, our great union. is in the wake-up call of a lifetime. Later that night, Pavel Bulanov arrived al alone at the NKVD HQ in Irkutsk. Only minutes later, a large column of trucks filled to the brim with NKVD officers left the compound under the cover of darkness and rolled into the city to inflict terror upon the enemies of the people. The great purge had begun. Screams and gunshots echoed through the night. We love the purges. Recall suspect personnel. We have a lot of suspects noted by the NKVD for potential punishment. Whether their track record are a lot more minor cases of simply sheer incompetence or more extreme cases of corruption, we'll need to remove them from their positions for the necessary steps of the purges. However, while the people we are purging might have been incompetent at their jobs or might have had traces of corruption, we cannot just remove them from their positions and leave them an empty void. Those positions will, positions will need to be filled. We will instate some temporary personnel to fill their shoes in their jobs. We cannot leave such a power gap or else we could be further destabilizing the union. Smart man. Smart, smart, smart. And I can't believe we won. He's only level 2 attack, which is, you know, not great, but still. He's going to have to get better, though. There you go. Oh, this was over a river, too. Huh, that sucks. Fighting a river. Gotta really suck, man. Uh, we could train, but I want to save as much equipment as possible. We have less than 1,000 infantry equipment, so we probably want to save that for now. And when can we do the next reform? I'd love to do another reform. We still have quite a few libertarian socialists with Leonid Konstantinov... Uh, Versus Yagoda. Oh, Papa Yagoda. An afternoon swim. Ilya sat leisurely upon the tall red rock, an unbecoming sight for an NKVD officer. Perched upon an outcropping that emerged from the depths of Lake Baikal, he glanced back towards his neatly folded clothes on the shore. A younger Ilya would have been afraid to exhibit such lax behavior on duty, but the last few days had changed him immensely. A piece had come over the aging murderer, a piece he refused to vacate. His eyes turned to the green waters below him, or before him, taking their time to meet the sun-kissed horizon below it. He saw the faint outlines of Nerpa seals, unique little fishermen who frequently found themselves pestered by birds. In many ways, he related to the birds. He was, like them, a pest. While the people of Irkutsk City attempted to carve out lives in this Russian hellscape, Ilya harassed them, and his head sat thousands of words, snippets of conversation between lovers, friends, families. All of them were stolen, private snapshots of lives acquired via surveillance. Upon his hands, where there was much blood, young and old, idealist and cynic, patriotic traitor. Each of them had met with Ilya's justice at one time or another. He laughed quietly at the dramatic tone of his thoughts. What had made the Sablonets any different? The regret he felt now, the one that had seemingly turned him into an aspiring poet, was one he hadn't experienced in decades. Perhaps, though, Ilya was the seal instead, a man haunted by his own past, invisible to him for many years. The seal to a thousand lurking birds that had finally come home to roost. As he stood up from the rock and began his long swim to shore, he made a decision. Ilya will not be returning to Irkutsk. All that had tied him to that place seemed shattered by whatever realizations the lake had bestowed. His duty was as faint as a distant cloud. So that, so it was that an NKVD veteran abandoned his duties and set off for the Siberian wastes. Lake like Baikal sure is beautiful. Much like ourselves. Oh, just saying. Whatever, you know. We're so beautiful. Oh. Anyways, oh. The investigations. While nobody can remain out of the NKVD's grasp for long, it has become clear that some of the suspects we are closing in on are simply entrenched too deep into the political machine to be removed easily. Now that the commission has been assembled, we shall begin a series, a wide series, of investigations to gather evidence on those corrupt officials who foolishly assume they are untouchable. With luck, we will find something concrete and can continue to make arrests. Once we have enough material to start on, the crackdown's in earnest. However, the question remains as to how to properly deal with arrested officials. With the evidence in hand, the commission will move to determine the severity of the suspect's crime and therefore the severity of their punishment. Well, most of these parasites will no doubt be found to be the enemies of the state and will be purged for the idiotic 
crimes against the people. There may be some who are not too far gone and can be encouraged to realize the errors of their ways. Once the evidence has been gathered and reviewed, the final decision on whether or not to show clemency with minor offenders will ultimately rest on Comrade you go to end the good old NKVD. They want her stuff? They can't have it. Ah, oh, cheetah, cheetah. We, got, we might as well just stay here, cheetah. They love, they love us. They really love us. And they actually loot themselves. Okay, good. Interesting to know. Very interesting to know. But they have to die. Just like all the others. Yeah, we have enough days. So I'm not too worried about that. And my apologies for my mispronunciations right now and earlier in the episode. When I'm recording this, I'm just going a little crazy, I guess. We will not back down. Ah, Madagascar is falling apart. Good. Oh, it's March 63. Happy 63, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. We here in Yagoda Land are having a great time. Forced labor system. The authority of the Gulag Agency shall be expanded and allowed... Greater allowances shall be made for the use of forced labor in the state industry. Heck yeah. We need more influence for this one. The jurisdiction that the NKVD possesses shall be increased to grant their units unrestricted freedom to act in frontline operations. A new NKVD rifle division will be raised in the capital. Strengthen General Secretary powers. Huh. The powers of the General Secretary of the Communist Party will be greatly expanded. The power of the state function shall, faction shall be assured. That's fine. We can do that one, I guess. 62. Is it only one by one? That kind of sucks, I'll be honest. That really sucks. Ah, they do have three divisions there now. Interesting. And there we go. Let's continue on. We sh Oh! I thought they had four for a second there. Zero tolerance. Opportunities for forgiveness, right? We want the state. Right? We want the state. Yes. There are a certain group of people within our reach that we could potentially use to our advantage in order to further reestablish our glorious republic. Their role in the prior administration was highly effective, but that all that effectiveness ended up coming at a price. Corruption. However, there now lies an opportunity for us to rein in those administratively able ministers and incorporate them into our own government. If we were to utilize these people to our advantage, we could promise them redemption. They can regain their original positions and we can cover their tracks, however, only under certain conditions that they do not repeat their erroneous actions once more. Zero Tolerance. Um, that does the party? Everything for the state, though. Huh. It seems like opportunities for forgiveness would be for the party, I guess. But I guess, yeah, we're going to keep going with the state. We want the state, right? We've been doing a lot of the state stuff. Oh, a little bit more lag. Yeah, we've been pushing for the state influence, so. Yeah, opportunities for forgiveness. Not bad. Into the files. For the past two weeks, a special NKVD commission has been meeting in their HQ in Irkutsk every day to lay the groundwork for investigating the more high-profile targets of Yagoda's purges. Files were examined, evidence was reviewed, and men's very fates were to be decided upon. Those who were in the highest commission, or in the commission, were a veritable who's-who's of the NKVD's highest echelons. Among them was Chief Security Pavel Bulanov, and on this occasion, General Secretary Yagoda himself. Now, comrades, we are in the process of gathering enough evidence to arrest every man who has attained a Soviet political office in the past ten years. And there is still one question that we have yet to broach, and I figured now would be a good time as any. Almost every man in the room looked at Bolonov in anticipation. Once these men are in custody, how do you all propose they are dealt with? Much to Bolonov's dismay, the room almost immediately fell into a deafening silence. After a deceptively long quiet intermixed with nervous glances and coughs, it was finally broken by a visibly irritated Yagoda. You mean to tell me that you idiots have been melting or meeting in uh, his place for almost two gosh darn weeks now and still haven't figured this out? What a joke! After further silence, only after one officer had the courage to speak up. Now that you mention it, that, that does seem like a rather important detail to leave open. Yagoda only sighed and buried his face into his hands in response. Bolonov attempted to alleviate the situation before Yagoda began naming names, or demanding names. Comrade Yagoda, if I may, how do you think the punishment should be dealt? These investigations, after all, were your idea. Perhaps it would be best if you were the one to decide? You go to lift it his head to respond. We will show no mercy. These corrupt, incompetent parasites will be shot so that they may never trouble us again. As for those who are too useful to fill with lead, I will decide in due time. From now on, please do not make me do everything myself, comrades. With that, you go to left the room. The rest were not far behind. Time to get to work. Good. The Irkutsk trials. The time has come. Our juris or not jurisdiction. Our investigation have been has been completed. Our judicial approach has been decided upon, and we must now act to complete our purge of the state's enemies. We will bring those identified as guilty through whatever means to trial. We will show the people directly that these counter revolutionary elements, corrupt officials, traitors, parasites, and others cannot escape justice and judgment. And once they're finally gone, the state and party will at last be secure. We will make sure of it. Well, there's a lot of PP and stability. Well, a lot of PP at least. Not bad, at least we won. Our reserve training? Great! And let's grab some of that, too. Oh, wait. Oh, they've not been raided. Oh, god dang. Someone else raided them? Come on, man. Well, I guess at the very least. Go back here. We want to raid these guys again if, if we possibly can.
and I guess we'll do we'll do that one. And I'm going to go ahead and read lessons from mutiny. With the ideology of the brought mutiny, the disgraceful Stalinist rebellion against the Soviet Union was in the wrong place, and they were promptly crushed by the real revolution they sought to revolt against. Perhaps we should take some notes of their tactical ability against us. The ability for the rebels to arm so many supporters is a curious one, and we should be com opening commissions into. We need to analyze how they were able to achieve what they had managed to, and see how we can adopt that to the Soviet Union's army. While the Stalinists might not have been good at using their tactics effectively, the Soviet Union will happily rebrand it as ours and use it more efficiently. But let's do that one too. And I'll go ahead and I'll screen go and click on that once this one is finished. But I must end the episode here. If you enjoyed the video though, please do consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow when we will have the state faction in full control of the power and move on to the rest of Eastern Siberia. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.